All right, last video, the one you've all been waiting for, colligative properties. Just briefly going to mention these four colligative properties. Um, basically, because I feel like you can't get out of this class without at least having heard about colligative properties. And these are properties of, this, of solutions. that differ from pure solvent. So you make a solution and it behaves differently than the pure solvent does, okay? So let me list them out really quickly. Number one is vapor pressure depression. Number two, freezing point depression. Uh, three, I almost did four, boiling point elevation. And four is osmotic pressure. Okay, the first three we can deal with together. The fourth one is, is, is kind of somewhat unrelated. So these three are all related, um, and they relate back to the uh, vapor pressure depression. Okay, we didn't talk about freezing point in terms of uh, vapor pressure, but it does have to do with vapor pressure. Definitely talked about boiling point in terms of vapor pressure. So let's look at a phase diagram for just any solvent and you know let's talk about water I guess because we always talk about water but it doesn't have to be water so here's our phase diagram and that is for pure solvent okay now if the vapor pressure is depressed at any given temperature that is the pressure above the solvent is lower, what happens is we have basically a parallel line that's a little bit lower. And a parallel line that's a little bit lower. Oh, I forgot. Um, low temperature, we have a solid. Higher temperature, but higher pressure, we have a liquid. And then uh, higher temperature, low pressure, we have gas. Okay? So, <clears throat> Let's just look at this for a second and see how it relates to vapor pressure. Or, I'm sorry, well, let's just look at it before I talk myself into a jam. Okay, let's just take, let's just say this is one atmosphere. So if we have one atmosphere there, then this temperature here should be our normal what should be our normal freezing point but look our new phase diagram or our new line liquid solid line gives us a different temperature okay, here this should be our normal boiling point but here is our new boiling point for this solution Yeah, let me just kind of write on this a little bit. I forgot to mark that that is for the solution. And all of this is for pure solvent. Same goes for the green line there. Okay, so here we have our normal boiling point. Like that would be zero degrees. I'm sorry, normal freezing point. freezing point, melting point, whatever. And if this were water, this would be 100 degrees here. That's our normal boiling point. But we have this elevated temperature here. That's the VP of the solution. So you can see it's higher. And I'll just say it's greater than 100 degrees Celsius. Again, that only goes for water. And here's our freezing point. 
melting point, what have you, of the solution. And it is less than zero degrees Celsius. So because that vapor pressure is different, we get a broader range for the liquid. So what good does this do us? Well, um, when we're talking about different freezing points, if we have this situation going on here, <clears throat> okay, we can use that to melt ice. You put a little salt on ice, it makes a solution that lowers the freezing point. And let's just say that the temperature for the day is right here. And then we're below the freezing point and we put some salt on there and now we've moved the freezing point of the ice below the freeze, uh, temperature of the day. Now the ice on the road will melt. Okay, And that is common uh, in the Midwest, back east. They also do it in the mountains here in California, although they try to deny it. Um, let's see, what about over here? We've raised the temperature here. Some people say cooking pasta with salt in it will increase the temperature of the boiling water and that will make the pasta cook faster. That is not true because it's such a small effect. You put salt in your boiling water because it tastes good, all right? Um, this has implications for things like distillation. If you're distil distilling, you know, if you're Jack Daniels dist distillery, there you have to know the boiling points of your solution, stuff like that, okay? now. Moving on to osmotic pressure, just so we can get through all of this. I'll try and do this really quickly. Um, so if we have kind of a U-shaped glass tube, and we put a semi-permeable membrane in here. And we're going to put, on one side, we're going to put a solution. Okay, this is all full of solution. This, and we're going to make these equal. This is pure water. And the water can move through the semi-permeable membrane, but the solution, let's say it's just salt water, the salt can't. So after some time, if we let this sit, Here's what we'll find. We will find, we still have our semi-permeal membrane, still there. Okay, um, we will find that the water is going to drop and the liquid is going to rise, or the solution is going to rise. So that went down, that went up, okay? And where would we get the, the pressure thing from? Well, we have a column here. That height difference is our osmotic pressure. Okay. I should say that osmosis is, I always forget you guys don't know everything. Osmosis is the diffusion of solvent through, it would have been nice to write this before, through a semi permeable membrane. And when we talk about osmotic pressure, it's usually water. But I've done this in chemistry class with the solvents that weren't water. Um, you can use this to figure out the molar mass of a molecule, a solvent molecule. Um, but that height difference is the osmotic pressure. It's just the pressure that prevents osmosis. So let's just say we came in here, and instead of just letting this sit, Let's say we took a big plunger or a lot of pressure and we pushed on this and we forced the water to go backwards in reverse of osmosis. What would we call that? We would call that reverse osmosis. Tricky, huh? So if you apply more pressure than the osmotic pressure, you can reverse the osmosis pressure and you can purify salt water or any water. 
The tricky part is that for every 10 gallons of water you pump, you only get about six gallons of purified water. It requires tremendous pressure, and so it's very expensive to pump all of that water and create those high pressures. But with uh, renewable energies, uh, it's becoming more efficient, and especially in drought times. We're building reverse osmosis plants in places, I think there's one done in San Diego, there's one in Monterey. The Middle East has a lot of these because they have a lot of energy, but not a lot of drinkable water, okay? One other thing, osmotic pressure. What happens if you drink too much water, say during a frat hazing when you're banned from drinking alcohol? Well, <clears throat> what happens is you get you dilute your blood to the point where the water from your blood will go into your brain. Your brain swells, it hits your skull, can't expand anymore, and you can die, okay? That happened at Chico State several years ago. So, you think, and somebody died trying to win a Wii when Wiis were brand new. And it was something like, I'm, I won't pee for a Wii or something. They had to drink a bunch of water without going to the bathroom. Um, a woman died trying to win a stupid video game. So if somebody says, see how much water you can drink, ha, 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 don't do it. All right, you guys, that is it for the semester. We are done. Hallelujah. Um, enjoy studying, I guess.